In this episode, I'm going to review the MakeBlock X-Tool D1 Pro laser cutter and engraver. Later in the video, I'm even going to show you how to set up your first mini project with it. Full disclosure, this is a paid promotion. However, I've had many offers from many different laser cutter manufacturers. So let's see if I've made a good choice. So let's go ahead and crack this open and see what we've got. So we've got what appear to be manuals at the top here. So there's a little thank you note, that's very nice. Um, there's a little brochure here with magical things to be done with the X tool. Excellent. It'll give us plenty of ideas. So, you know, it says what we can cut, what we can engrave. So what we got, we can cut and engrave wood, leather, paper, fabric, acrylic, cardboard, and PVC. And it looks like we can engrave glass, ceramics, rubber, slate, stainless steel, aluminium alloy, and painted metal. We have a quick start guide here. Let's have a quick flick through. And assembly instructions, excellent. And then we've got another box here. Let's open that up. Oh, fantastic. We've got some test materials that we can use. We've got what looks like a, an aluminium sheet to protect the workbench. And we've got a very nice package of various materials that we can actually test on. It looks like we've got at least wood and cork. That looks like possibly aluminium. So we'll open that up and take a look shortly as well. Excellent. And um, it's really nice that, you know, a manufacturer of a product like this would actually supply you with a number of materials to get you going, uh, to have a, have a little burl and see how you get on with it. Fantastic. So let's remove the foam packaging here. And we've got the main frame of the X-Tool itself. Let's see if we can root these things out. So we've got a stepper motor here with a, a tension drive belt. Interesting, let's take a look at this. So in the X-Tool D1 Pro, the latest version, they've actually included limit switches here, and here's the limit switch. Um, this is actually um, an opto, uh, it's, it's an optical limit switch rather than a, a clicky physical limit switch. So I guess that's a, a good point. I mean, it's not likely to wear out. Very nice. Um, just looking at the bottom of here, it's all stainless steel rails that, they, uh, that the parts run on. Absolutely fantastic. Metal pulleys as well, awesome. So there's another part to the assembly here. Obviously, we'll need to tension this belt. Um, cool. And this looks like the front part of the machine. We've got a little clicky on and off switch. Oh, excellent. We've got the feet. So we've got little spaces here that we can use to raise the height of the bed of the machine. So, you know, we can engrave or cut things that are uh, thicker, you know, have some dimension to them. So just set those to one side. So yeah, this is the front part of the machine here. We've got um, a PCB down at the bottom here with uh, obviously a microcontroller. It looks like we have a little Wi-Fi antenna as well. Very nice. And this would be the gantry. So the laser will mount on this and slide along. And again, stainless steel rails. I really like to see stainless steel pulleys in here. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I've built machines similar to uh, laser engravers in the past, and I actually use nylon pulleys. Uh, nylon pulleys are all right, but they have a tendency, if you over tighten them, they flatten on the rounded surfaces, and then you have a pulley that's no longer round anymore. So it's really nice to see stainless, it looks like stainless steel all the way through for the rails and the pulleys itself. Fantastic. So we've got a, a steel bar here, um, probably for driving something, it'll be, it'll be a gantry or something. And they've packaged it in a nice bit of foam with a slot cut in it so that it doesn't bend in shipping. Very, very nice. I'll just set that back in there so that I don't damage it while I'm having a look at this. Nothing too exciting on the back side, but all really, really very nice construction indeed. It has to be said, um, it, it really does look and feel like a quality piece of kit. 
So we'll have a look at this side. We've got the laser head itself. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. And we've got a nice little box here. This rattles, so I'm assuming there's screws in it. Oh, we've got what appear to be laser safety glasses. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know I'm a big fan of safety glasses. We've also got a little uh, box here with, let's crack it open. Um, all sorts of bits and pieces. Let's see, what is there? There's the usual screws. We've got a bunch of Allen keys. I assume that's an Allen key for every single um, screw that we've got. Got a nice little screwdriver. We've got an SD card. We've got what looks like a flexi um, coupler for presumably that shaft that I pulled out. Cool. And this looks suspicious like it's going to be uh, the air assist connection. So let's take a look at the laser head itself. I'll just get this out of the anti-static bag. And there it is. Really very nice. It, it feels solidly built. There's nothing rattling or moving on it. I like the use of the shield around the workpiece to try and minimize any stray light. That's a very, very nice feature. Um, Xtool sent me the 10 watt version of this, although they now do a 20 watt version. I'm quite happy with the, with the 10 watt version. I think I'll be able to do plenty of work with it. Um, but yeah, very, very nice. Let's take a look at the business end. Um, so this is where the laser beam would emerge from. And at the side here, we've got a, a hole for air assist. In the Xtool D1 Pro, there's an added feature in here, a safety feature. It does flame detection. There's a little sensor down at the bottom here. And the idea is that if the workpiece catches fire for whatever reason, it will sound the alarm and stop the machine. Now, obviously, you know, this is a class four laser capable of engraving and cutting, and you don't want to leave these things unattended. That said, it is nice to have safety features and you know, you should have safety features in your product. As, uh, as I recall, these safety features have actually been added because users have requested them. Um, and again, that's really very nice that a company is actually listening to its customer base and, and uh, adding features in as requested. At the side of the laser here, we've got a little sort of gold colored um, hole. That's actually the laser crosshairs for lining up your laser on your workpiece. Again, a very, very nice feature. If we take a look at the side here, we've got a little drop down side arm that actually sets the focal length to the workpiece and actually sets the correct distance. Very nice. So let's go right ahead and get this built. I've already laid out the main parts and we'll just go for it. Now we've got this thing all assembled, let's go laser some stuff. So obviously we need some software to run the Xtool D1 Pro and I'm going to start off by using the Laserbox software available on the Xtools website. I'll put in the link in the description down below for this, although it's, it's freely available in the manual anyway. But yeah, I'm, I'm fully aware that you can use Lightburn with this, but I want to see how quickly you can get started running, you know, out the box. So let's have a look at that. So I have the software fired up here and it's really quite simplistic. We've got a nice little work area in the middle. I've actually just zoomed into this because I'm going to do something small to begin with. Um, we've got some basic shapes down the left hand side. So if I click on shape, we've, we can just fire some shapes in, right? Um, you know, it's, this is not a full featured tool. You're not going to be a great artist in this, um, but it's something to get you going. It looks, you know, pretty reasonable. We've got text in here as well. So we can add in text, we can add in images, um, whatever else have you. Excellent. Um, up at the top right hand corner here, we can see that the device isn't connected yet. So I'll turn it on and then hit connect device. I actually have this connected uh, via USB. I'm a big fan of wired connections, especially in workshops. Um, awesome. Let's, let's build a project. Let's do something really, really simple to start off with. Uh, let's do a key fob. So let's see, we want an oval shape of some description. Um, there we go. That's a little large. So we'll make it 70 by 30. Um, which is still rather large, but eh, big enough that I'll find my keys, right? Um, we'll go and insert a circle over here for a hole. And then we'll move, oh, look at that. It's got a little line that tells us where the center of the workpiece is. That's very nice. Um, I'll leave it size as, you know, I'll just tweak it. Let's make it three millimeters by three millimeters. So a little hole. Great. And then I want an image. So let's go and import some image. Now this image is a little large, so we'll have to shrink it down. And then when we've arranged everything how we want it, we'll talk about powers and speeds for this stuff. That's looking just fine. We'll just embiggen this a little bit. 
Awesome. And once again, when you move things around in this work area, it's really nice that when the center of a, of a defined shape is found, it draws you some lines so that you know you're in the middle. Excellent. Let's just tweak that hole a little bit towards the edge there. Perfect. I'm totally happy with that. Um, about what we're going to do with this. So what I'm after here is, is seeing, well, can we engrave and cut and do all the things, right? Um, we want to cut out the oval. We want to, because that's going to be our key fob. We want to cut out the hole but we want to engrave the text. So if we click on each of these things in turn, if I click on the oval here, um, you can see I've actually already set this as, as uh, three millimeter basswood plywood. There's actually built in stuff in this software um, which will give you the relevant um, powers and speeds for the laser, which is really, really nice to see as well. You know, rather than sort of guessing, well, you know, how many millimeters per second should I be moving the laser at and at what percent power should I be running it at? Um, all these things, you know, are user defined. So if you want to do metal business cards, there'll be particular powers and speeds for those. Um, we're using three millimeter, uh, three millimeter plywood. So we'll just go ahead with that. For the oval, we want to make sure that we're cutting and it says that the power is gonna be 100% and the speed is three millimeters per second. I mean, if this doesn't work out very well, you can always tweak these. You know, you can say, well, I want user defined parameters. Um, but you know, real quick, let's see if we can rattle out a key fob. Let's click on the next element, which is the drill hole. Um, again, I want to cut that. So I'll just select cut, done. For the image, we'll just uh, click on that. It knows it's an image. Um, it just knows, well, because it's an image and we plopped it on in there and it's just like, eh, well, that's an image, so we're gonna engrave it. And this is exactly what I'm after. Um, really, really easy to set up and use. It has to be said, especially for simple little projects like this. Um, after that, we're done. We can hit start. Um, the first job that you should really do is to frame your work area, um, which is to say that the laser crosshairs that appear, so there's a little red laser crosshair, it will move the laser around the work area and you'll be able to see that, you know, whether or not you've got your workpiece lined up correctly. So let's do that real quick. And once framing is done and we're happy with it, we can run the job. This is excellent, it's fair working its way through the engraving there. Fantastic. Now it's cutting the drill hole. Look at that, the piece of wood's fallen right through. Excellent. When I mounted this workpiece, I actually mounted it on a couple of uh, aluminium rails to hold it clear of the work surface. And there's a bit of aluminium underneath as well to protect the, the wood. But the idea is that hopefully when this completes, the piece will just drop through. It looks like on camera that there's flames coming out from underneath the wood, but it's actually just smoke that's been illuminated by the laser light. Incidentally, I mentioned in the unboxing that the X-Tool has flame detection, and when I was messing around with materials originally, I actually did manage to set something on fire. And when the flame detection alarm goes off, it is incredibly loud which is really good because if you're in a, a work area where it's quite noisy, you know, you've got extractor fans running and all the rest of it, you would most assuredly hear it. Almost there. Absolutely fantastic. It's actually cut all the way through and the piece has actually dropped down onto the workbench, which is what I expected. Let's see what kind of job we've done. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Excellent. I think as a first project, a key fob is probably the way to go. If you want, if you want a first cutting and engraving project, I would say this is probably it. 
So according to the manual, the Xtool D1 Pro will engrave slate. So I have to see this, so let's give this a go. I've speeded up this portion of the video. The job itself took a little under 10 minutes to complete and I'd done hardly any optimization whatsoever on the engraving. The new Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt should easily be able to do this job in just a few minutes. If you want to buy one of these, please use the affiliate link in the description below. It really helps out the channel. <laughs> well, now I'm officially impressed. That is absolutely fantastic. What a really impressive job that's made of that. Amazing. Gentle reminder while we're on the subject, don't forget to wear protection. The Xtool D1 Pro has proved itself to be an excellent little laser engraver. I say little, but the bed size on this is absolutely enormous when you compare it to the crusty old CO2 laser I have out in the shed. It's proven itself more than capable of engraving wood and slate. Uh, the slate's turned out really, really well indeed. Very fast cutting speeds, it has to be said, for a, a diode laser. And then we've got all of the other materials as well included in the kit, which I just haven't had a chance to have a go at in this video. But yep, yeah, fantastic. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.